हेलो स्टूडेंट्स एज वी नो रेस्पिरेशन इज रेगुलेटेड बाय बोथ केमिकल रेगुलेशन एंड न्यूरल रेगुलेशन ओके इन दिस क्लास वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट केमिकल रेगुलेशन ऑफ रेस्पिरेटरी सिस्टम ओके सो रिमेंबर दिस केमिकल रेगुलेशन ऑफ रेस्पिरेटरी सिस्टम इट इज डन बाय कीमो रिसेप्टर्स राइट इट डाउन इट इज डन बाय कीमो रिसेप्टर्स विच डिटेक्ट्स केमिकल चेंजेस ओके द नेम इट सेल्फ सजेस इट डिटेक्ट्स केमिकल चेंजेस ओके रिमेंबर दिस कीमो रिसेप्टर्स in case of chemical regulation are of two types that is peripheral chemoreceptors and central chemoreceptors okay peripheral and central chemoreceptors okay this peripheral chemoreceptors are present in think it is present in what it is present in carotid sinus or body remember it is present in carotid body write it down carotid body and aortic body okay not sinus its body okay peripheral chemoreceptors are present in carotid body and aortic body what about central chemoreceptors remember central chemoreceptors are present in where it is present in neurons of ventral surface of pons or medulla remember its medulla okay ventral surface of medulla write it down okay peripheral chemoreceptors are in carotid and aortic body while central chemoreceptors are present in neurons of ventral surface of medulla okay now let's see where is your carotid what i told you just now it is carotid body so just tell me where is your carotid body and aortic body let's find it out this is your heart this is your arch of aorta and over here you can see this is a common carotid artery artery which is now dividing into the internal and external carotid artery so near this over here you will get carotid body okay it's very important this one is your carotid body and this small one is again your carotid body it is present near bifurcation of common carotid artery okay what about aortic body it's very simple it is present in arch of aorta so this is your arch of aorta so over here you will get aortic body so these are your aortic body okay got it now so remember efferents from this carotid body and efferents from aortic body they are carried via different nerves okay so remember efferents from carotid body are carried by ninth now it's very important your glossopharyngeal nerve okay so from here here you will get ninth nerve ninth nerve is the nerve which is carrying information from carotid body what about aortic body remember aortic body efferents are your tenth nerve so this is your tenth nerve okay your vagus nerve it's very important from aortic body it's tenth nerve while from carotid body it's ninth nerve okay now remember both this ninth and tenth nerve they end in where remember they end in special respiratory group of medulla its ventral respiratory group of neurons or dorsal respiratory group of neurons just tell me remember and write it down that these ninth and tenth nerves from peripheral chemoreceptors they end in dorsal yeah it's dorsal not ventral it's dorsal respiratory group of neurons in medulla okay efferents are going and ending in drg that is dorsal respiratory group of neurons of medulla ultimately increasing ventilation okay got it ultimately increasing ventilation so this is how efferents are going ending on drg that is dorsal group of respiratory neurons of medulla and then ultimately increasing ventilation okay now let's see which factors stimulates this peripheral chemoreceptors so remember guys whenever there is increase in pco2 increase in partial pressure of carbon dioxide how much how much remember it is more than 37 mm of mercury write it down more than 37 mm of mercury increase in pco2 will stimulate peripheral chemoreceptors okay and remember this is nothing but your respiratory acidosis where you will get increase in pco2 okay now when there is decrease in po2 how much decrease remember it's less than how much it's less than 60 mm of mercury it's very important guys write it down less than 60 mm of mercury of po2 stimulates peripheral chemoreceptors how much less than 60 okay so this is nothing but your 
hypoxia okay now what about h plus remember increase h plus in blood which is nothing but your metabolic acidosis okay so metabolic acidosis where you are getting increase h plus in blood is again stimulating your peripheral chemoreceptors so these are stimuli which stimulates your peripheral chemoreceptors okay just write it down now remember this carotid body these aortic bodies they are having special cells which are they remember they are of two types first is type 1 glomus cell and second is type 2 glomus cell okay so over here you can see if i just see the microscopic view of these bodies carotid bodies then you will see that this one this round one from where you can see that the efferents are going is nothing but your type 1 okay it's type 1 not type 2 so this is your type 1 cell this is again your type 1 glomus cell and from here you can see these are your efferent exons okay and these are your fenestrated capillaries okay what about this cell then this is a cell which is supporting this type 1 this is nothing but your type 2 glomus cell okay so this is microscopic view okay so this is your type 1 glomus cell this is your type 2 glomus cells and these are your efferent exons okay so remember these bodies contain two types of cells just now i told you it's type 1 glomus cells okay and type 2 glomus cells okay and remember these type 1 glomus cells are sensor cells okay they are the one who are sensing changes in partial pressure of oxygen partial pressure of co2 and h plus okay it's very important type 1 glomus cells are sensor cells okay and remember that they contain oxygen sensitive potassium channels write it down they contain oxygen sensitive oxygen sensitive potassium channels which sense and corrects hypoxia write it down which sense and corrects hypoxia so it is a type 1 cells type 1 what type 1 glomus cells which are having this oxygen sensitive potassium channels you should know this okay what about type 2 then remember type 2 glomus cells they are just supporting cells here you can see they are just supporting what they are just supporting type 1 glomus cells okay so they are supporting cells which is also called sustentacular cells okay so type 2 glomus cells are just supporting cells which is also called sustentacular cells while the type 1 is main sensor cells which are having oxygen sensitive potassium channels okay now let's see what will happen if po2 level is changed if po2 is normal what will happen if po2 is increased then how this po2 changes will stimulate this glomus cells let's see so if PO2 is normal, okay, if PO2 is normal, then remember oxygen sensitive potassium channels remain, what, remain open, yeah, it's very important guys, okay, so suppose this is your type 1 glomus cells, okay, so this is your type 1 glomus cell, this is your efferent now, okay, near this type 1 glomus cell, you know that, and suppose this is your artery, which is having normal PO2. This time we are considering its normal PO2. This is your type 1 glomus cell. This is your efferent nerve. Okay. So, just now I told you that if PO2 is normal, then this type 1 glomus cell, which is a sensor cell, is having oxygen sensitive potassium channel. So, this green one is your oxygen sensitive potassium channel. Remember, whenever PO2 is normal, then this oxygen sensitive channel remains open and now potassium continuously moves out of the cell because now this channel is open okay why because PO2 is normal so what will happen so due to this potassium inside the cell will decrease yeah there will be decrease in potassium ions inside the cell it means there will be decrease in positivity inside the cell so remember if PO2 is normal then oxygen sensitive potassium channel remain open so potassium efflux occur obviously the channels are open so potassium efflux occur which decreases potassium within the cell it's obvious okay which decreases potassium within the cell leading to what leading to write it down leading to hyperpolarization or depolarization if positive ion is going outside the cell then this is hyperpolarization leading to hyper polarization of cell 
okay it's very important guys write it down hyperpolarization of cell so what will happen if there is hyperpolarization of cell then there will be no release of neurotransmitter from this type 1 glomus cell it's very very important guys why is it so remember whenever hyperpolarization is going on then one more channel is present on this type 1 glomus cell it's your voltage gated calcium channels okay and remember this voltage gated calcium channels will open only when cell gets depolarized okay but here as we know po2 is normal so potassium is continuously going out the cell is hyperpolarized so this voltage gated calcium channels will not open so that there will be no release of neurotransmitters so that there will be no conduction of signal to the central nervous system okay it's very important so remember there will be no release of neurotransmitter from glomus cell and no excitation of efferent nerves okay because neurotransmitters are very important for excitation of efferent nerves so no excitation of efferent nerves so no signals go to central nervous system okay it means we can say if po2 partial pressure of oxygen is normal then no signals go to central nervous system okay it's very important write it down now let's see what will happen if po2 becomes less than 60 millimeter of mercury remember whenever po2 decreases less than 60 millimeter of mercury then oxygen sensitive potassium channels get closed yeah so again we know that this one is your type 1 glomus cell okay this is your artery okay this is your efferent nerve so whenever po2 becomes less than 60 millimeter of mercury then remember this oxygen sensitive potassium channels get closed what will happen to the potassium ions now? Now, potassium ions will accumulate inside the cell. So, positivity inside the cell will be increased. This is nothing but depolarization. Okay. Due to depolarization of the cell, now this channel, this is voltage gated calcium channels will now open and now calcium will move inside the cell leading to release of neurotransmitters and now these neurotransmitter will send signal through the efferent nerves to the central nervous system. Got it? Now let's summarize once, once again. If PO2 becomes less than 60 millimeter of mercury, then oxygen sensitive potassium channels will close. Okay. And now there will be no more potassium efflux, which increases potassium within the cell. It's obvious because potassium is now not going outside the cell. So, potassium level inside the cell will be increased. Now, cell is depolarized or hyperpolarized. It is depolarized. Okay. So, depolarization of cell. Okay. Leading to depolarization of cell. So, now it leads to opening of, I told you it leads to opening of voltage gated calcium channels, okay. Voltage gated calcium channels are now open and now calcium will move inside the cell leading to release of neurotransmitters, okay. It leads to release of neurotransmitters and remember guys which neurotransmitters? It's ATP, acetylcholine and dopamine write it down it's very 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 important atp acetylcholine and dopamine are neurotransmitters and among these most most important neurotransmitter is your atp yeah atp and acetylcholine are most important okay atp and acetylcholine so remember guys okay so now there will be release of neurotransmitters which neurotransmitters atp acetylcholine and dopamine and now efferent nerves Obviously, now the efferent nerves get excited and send signal to the central nervous system leading to what? Leading to hyperventilation, which is nothing but increase rate and depth of respiration, which is nothing but increase rate and depth of respiration, okay? So, whenever PO2 becomes less than 60 millimeter of mercury, then there will be release of neurotransmitter efferent nerves get excited give signal to the central nervous system leading to hyperventilation which is nothing but increase rate and depth of respiration okay now let's see what will happen if there is increase in pco2 or increase in h plus in blood remember whenever there is increase in pco2 or increase in h plus in blood 
again they cause closure of oxygen sensitive potassium channels closure of oxygen sensitive potassium channels indirectly via some messenger system which we don't know uh, scientists are still searching about that okay so remember when i write it down increase pco2 or increase h plus in blood leads to closure of oxygen sensitive potassium channels indirectly okay so now what will happen no more potassium will go out okay no more potassium efflux so potassium again accumulate inside the cell leading to depolarization now voltage gated calcium channels will open calcium come inside the cell leading to release of neurotransmitter and now these neurotransmitters are nothing but your atp acetylcholine and dopamine and now these afferent nerves get excited give signal to central nervous system so simple guys okay so no more potassium efflux which increases potassium within the cell leading to depolarization yeah leading to depolarization of cell okay leading to again opening of which channels voltage gated calcium channels now there will be release of neurotransmitters afferent nerves get excited give signal to the central nervous system leading to hyperventilation so this is how increase pco2 or increase h plus leads to hyperventilation okay now remember for peripheral chemoreceptors direct stimulus is just now i told you direct stimulus is your decrease in what decrease in po2 how much less than 60 millimeter of mercury again indirect stimulus is just now again i told you about this it is increase in what increase in pco2 or increase in h plus in blood increase pco2 in blood or increase in h plus in blood again stimulates your peripheral chemoreceptors but indirectly okay again remember most sensitive stimulus among this most sensitive stimulus for peripheral chemoreceptor is just think it's very important guys it's what do you think it is increase in pco2 yeah write it down increase pco2 is most sensitive stimulus for activation of peripheral chemoreceptors okay